Hey everybody, this is David Young with Drone Launch Academy and welcome to the FAA Part 107 Practice Test Review. Um, in this video, I'm going to be going over uh, the practice test and walking you through how to answer the first question in detail so you know what you're doing and you understand the question. So, let's get started. Here we have our practice test, the Drone Launch Academy's 21 question practice test where we walk through some of the most missed questions and some of the most difficult ones to help you understand what you're doing and what you're gonna see on that FAA drone test. So let's dive in. Uh, read this before you get started. Basically it's saying you'll need these supplemental materials. If you click here, it'll take you to the FAA website where you can download this. And this is what you will get um, on the day of your test. It, it will be a physical booklet, and you can flip through it. It'll have all the charts uh, and things that you need for the test. Now, some of them are poor quality, but that's just what we have to live with because that's what the FAA gives us. So download this. We include some images in our uh, next to the questions, but if you want to zoom in and kind of see exactly what you're going to see on test day, we recommend downloading that. Next, to record your answers, you have this answer sheet here. And you can either print this off and uh, fill it out manually, or you can click the check boxes uh, within the PDF as well to score yourself. And you can go through this as many times as you want. Um, and you can print the whole thing out if you want. Just print the answer sheet out. It's up to you. Finally, to get the explanations and answers for all the questions, you can click here. That will take you to our website where we will provide you every answer with really detailed explanations to make sure you understand it. I just wanted to do a video for this first one to get you kick-started and make sure that you get rolling and understand everything. So, let's dive in. Question one, it says, refer to FAA CT 8082H. This whole rigmarole here just means this booklet because you can see it up here. That's what's showing you. It says, figure 23, area three. So let's go ahead and find that. So we're gonna go to figure 23 and you'll look, if you scroll a little bit, um, you'll see at the bottom here, this is the appendix. Let's scroll down a little bit more. You'll see it's a legend. So the first ones are legends, then you get into figures. So it's going to be further down in the booklet. Let's scroll. Okay, so we have figure nine. Keep going till we get to figure 23. And it should look like, like this, but I just want to see it in some more detail. Figure 21. And figure 23. Okay, here we go. It says... A client has hired you to inspect a tower on Tuesday. The tower to be inspected is a lighted tower, that's important, lighted tower six nautical miles southwest of Savannah Hilton Head International Airport, which is uh, SAV. At the highest allowable flight altitude above the tower, what airspace would you be in? We have three options here, class G, class E, or class C. Now, if you don't know anything about airspace, you are going to be epically confused at this question and have no idea how to answer it. But we'll walk you through some of that and teach you how to get to the answer on this one. The first thing you would need to do is go check out the legend. So in this booklet, towards the beginning, there is a sectional chart legend, and it tells you what a lot of these symbols on here mean. Now, if you're trying to figure this out on the day of the test, you probably won't get it and probably won't have enough time to finish. It's really just there for a reference point to refresh your memory. It's not going to teach you how to read these charts, but it will help you remember what some of these symbols mean if you forget or get confused. So let's take a look at that. It's toward the beginning here. We'll scroll up, get back to the beginning. Now remember, in person, you'll have uh, this physical booklet, and you can print this off if you want. But since I'm showing you on the video, I'm going to need to keep it on the screen here. Okay, so here's the sectional chart legend. And we need to know, okay, well, how do we know f a couple things? First, we need to know what the different types of airspace look like. How are those marked on these maps? Um, and it says the highest allowable flight altitude. Well, how do I know what the allowable flight altitude is? And then it says six miles southwest. How do I know how far six miles is? And it says the lighted tower. How do I find a lighted tower? So a lot of different things going on in here. First, let's look at lighted tower. How do we find out what a lighted tower is? Well, this one's pretty simple. Let me zoom in here a little bit for you guys. This here, it says obstructions. And you can see these are obstructions, which are the same things as towers. Um, these are things that stick up into the air. Mostly those are towers. Uh, you can see here's a symbol for something that's 1,000 feet and higher AGL. AGL means above ground level. So that means starting at the ground is zero feet and going up 1,000 feet or higher. Uh, and that's opposed to MSL, which is means sea level. 
which is your altitude or height in reference to what sea level is. So if you're starting uh, at, a th like, let's say the ground where you're standing, the city that you're in has an elevation of 1,000 feet already. Uh, if you would go up 1,000 feet above ground level, you're now going to be at 2,000 feet mean sea level, if that makes sense. So this says 1,000 feet and higher. This is what the symbol looks like. Uh, for below 1,000 feet, it looks like this little TP hut here. Um, then there's groups of obstructions. And then you can see here, obstruction with high intensity lights. So that gives the little thunderbolt symbol outside of the obstruction. So that means that those are lighted towers. Also, you're going to need to know this here. This shows you the, the height of the obstruction or tower Oops, in mean sea level on the top. And then within brackets, that gives you the above ground level altitude. So let's head back over to our question and take a look. We see here the lighted tower six nautical miles southwest of the airport. Now, if we go back to our sectional chart image, uh, figure 23, 23, there's a legend up here. Okay, it tells you nautical miles, statute miles, and kilometers. And you'll have a pencil and other items on the day of the test or just a scratch piece of paper. What I like to do is on a scratch piece of paper or in a pencil, put it down next to my booklet here and measure out what 10 nautical miles is. Then I either make a, a note on my paper or a mark on my pencil on the, uh, the, the rod part of the pencil. And then I can use that almost as a ruler on my chart. So I would mark out what about six nautical miles is maybe about here. And then I'd look down here and I would compare that from the center of Savannah Airport out six miles to the southwest. Now you know this is Savannah Airport um, because uh, airports have these little runway markers. Um, there's, a, there's an airport, there's an airport, there's an airport. They'll have um, the images of the runways on them too so you can see which directions the runways are. So we're going to six miles southwest. If you just look at the towers down here you can see that there's only one tower that is indicated as being a lighted tower with these thunderbolts here. Uh, so this is going to be our tower here, and we can measure it out from above. That's about six nautical miles. So I think this is the tower they're referring to. And if you look, you'll see all these different altitudes uh, marked on the towers. And this one is the closest to this tower, so I believe that this altitude information goes with this tower. Okay, so we can see that it's 1,548 feet mean sea level and 1,534 feet above ground level. So we know that's how tall the tower is. Um, for the next part of the question, when it says the highest allowable flight altitude, um, that is not going to be anywhere on the information you're going to get in your booklet. That's not on a legend. That's not anything. That's just part of the Part 107 operating rules that you would need to know. Um, you can find those in various places. Um, we talk about this in our detailed written explanation. We give you some references. But one of the operating rules is that you cannot fly higher than 400 feet above ground level or within a 400 foot radius or outside of a 400 foot radius of any structure. So you could fly 400 feet directly above this tower. So if this tower is 1,534 feet above ground level, we can fly our drone 1,934 feet above ground level. That's just 1,534 plus 400. Okay, so if we're flying our drone that high, what airspace are we going to be in? Next thing we need to figure out is what are the different airspaces look like. First, we're going to see this airport, and we see these rings here. Okay, airspace is generally indicated by rings or different sections um, going around the airport. If we go back to our legend again, okay, legend, you can zoom in here and see information about airport traffic service and airspace information. Here, it indicates the different types of airspace and what the boundary markers look like. So. We have our options of Class E, Class C, Class G. Class G is really any airspace that is not marked otherwise. So we can see here that Class C airspace is a bold magenta line. Class E airspace, there's two different types. There's a shaded magenta line and a dashed magenta line. The shaded magenta line means that it's Class E airspace starting at 700 feet above ground level and going upwards to the next class of airspace. Or class E with a dash line means that it starts at the surface, at the ground, and goes up to the next classification of airspace. So if we go back to our question here, we can zoom in here and see, all right, this was our tower. The first ring says class C. There's a second ring that says class C, but it also look like there, looks like there's a shaded magenta line, which means that there, there could be some class E airspace or is 
class E airspace underneath. So let's look here. The first thing you see, oh, and another thing to note is it tells you the altitude of that airspace um, by showing you these little division symbol looking things here. And these are all marked in mean sea level and they're in hundreds. So this is surface. So this means in this magenta ring right here, this class C airspace starts at the surface and goes up to 4,100 feet mean sea level, MSL. So just add two zeros on the end of this. So 4,100 feet mean sea level. Then in the next ring, the outer ring, or the outer shelf as they call it, it still has the same ceiling, goes up to 4,100 feet mean sea level, but this part of the airspace begins at 1,300 feet mean sea level. Then we're going to look and say, okay, um, underneath that though, we see that the uh, there's a shaded magenta ring in the same area, which means that class E airspace begins at 700 feet above ground level and goes up to wherever class C airspace begins. So if you remember from our tower, we were at 1,934 feet above ground level, and we could also add that to here, which is 1,548 feet mean sea level. If we add 400 feet to that, we get 1,948 feet mean sea level would be our altitude if we were 400 feet above that tower. So if we're at 1,948 feet mean sea level, that puts us right in between these two markers, which is 1,300 feet mean sea level and 4,100 feet mean sea level. So we would be within this outer shelf within class C airspace flying at that altitude. Let's look at the question again. And a key to this test is very thoroughly reading the question and making sure you understand exactly what it's saying. Sometimes they try to trick you off giving you things that sound like the right answer, but really when you read it more carefully, it's not. So you're inspecting a tower. Tower is the lighted tower six nautical miles southwest of the airport. Yep, we got that. At the highest allowable flight altitude above the tower, yes. What airspace would you be in? Now, it's not asking you if you need permission. It's not asking you anything else. It's saying, what airspace would you be in? And our answer is class C. You'd be in class C airspace because you would be above that 1,300 feet MSL, but below the 4,100 feet MSL. Now, there's other questions they can get into as far as, do you need permission before flying here? Or um, what kind of authorizations would you need? Um, that's going to be in some other questions, and we'll dive into those uh, later below, and you can read those explanations. But for now, we got our answer, Class C. All right, I hope this helped. I hope it helps you understand the types of information you need to know to pass this exam. Really, these sectional chart questions make up about half of a lot of people's exams. The FAA says that they test on this less frequently, but from what we've seen in actual practice, us taking it ourselves and our students reporting back, these sectional chart questions really do make up a large portion of the test. So you need to make sure you know this stuff inside and out. So go through our questions. We put a lot of sectional chart questions in here to make sure that you know uh, how to answer and what you're talking about. And a lot of these questions come straight off the exam. Either uh, our students have seen them or we've seen them ourselves and we put them right on here for you guys so you can be prepared. So thanks again for tuning in. Hope this helps. Please dive in, learn this material and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.